uh, today we would be talking about uh, the uh, one of the classical ground improvement techniques namely with uh, cement. Stabilization using cement and cementitious materials is uh, one of the standard techniques uh, because what happens is that many of the in situ soils they do not have uh, good bonding. So, if you want to increase the bonding uh, bonding resistance use of uh, cement or cementitious materials like uh, fly ash. In fact, fly ash also has some sort of cementitious compounds that I will show you. Uh, so, stabilization using cement and uh, admixtures such as fly ash blast furnace slag has been adopted in many geotechnical and highway engineering projects whether it is slopes or embankments or highways. Uh, these have been uh, used very extensively and the applications include shallow depth applications in case of ground improvement or subgrade, sub base and base course of the highways and embankment material. As we have seen earlier, we used uh, lime to increase the CBR and uh, to increase the stiffness and all that. Here we can use cement as well because uh, many of the industry people are more comfortable with cement though it is going to be quite expensive in many of the projects. Um, so, but then uh, people have been comfortable with the use of cement in many projects and uh, particularly right from 70s lot of work has been done on the use of uh, cement as a stabilizer or as a modifier in uh, ground improvement. The other important point was that there are some places where the soft soil is so deep and very soft and you need to construct something like a containment areas or some sort of uh, big structures. So, you must stabilize deep soil deposits maybe up to 10 meters like we have seen many other techniques which uh, we had like uh, pre consoled uh, pre prefabricated vertical drains then stone columns and all that this is also one of the techniques uh, like as I just said prefab uh, prefabricated vertical drains they stabilize the area by drainage whereas here for example in, in the case of stone columns they improve the overall bearing capacity because you are trying to put stone stone columns uh, in this case instead of the stone columns either you may put uh, cement soil cement columns that is a difference and uh, we will see how it is done. So, if you use small quantities of cement like addition of small quantities of cement proved to be very beneficial and the degree of strength and stiffness required is the basis for design and has been used in stabilization of highways and embankments. Like we have seen earlier that if the CBR is low you we add some sort of uh, binding agent like lime and the CBR increases. Similarly, we try to add cement as well here to see that there is an inc increase in strength as well as uh, stiffness both are required because we need that uh, bearing capacity to be increased particularly in the case of uh, uh, highways and embankments. And uh, sometimes uh, this is in the case of uh, shallow applications it is we can call it a modification of the existing soil behavior. But in some cases where the large scale applications are there uh, we need lo lot of quantities of course here also the quantities are huge but compared to the uh, cement stabilization for highways and uh, like say for example if you add some 3 per 10 percent or 5 percent of cement and then it incre increases the bearing capacity that is one thing. But here you are using large volume of uh, cement and uh, say there the quantities required are huge and we need large scale machinery and special processes are required for stabilization of deep soils which are weak. Uh, for example, here you may need a simple uh, road uh, spreader type of thing in the case of uh, lime stabilization we have seen. Uh, you need a stabilizer, you need a, a spreader, you need some sort of compaction equipment and all that which is quite simple. So, one can stabilize the uh, subgrades and uh, sub bases and all that, but here in the case of large scale applications uh, we need say if you want to try to put some columns we need to have uh, uh, some special type of equipment and procedures also because it is not easy. Why I am mentioning this example is that particularly in areas like Scandin Scandinavian countries like Sweden, Denmark and many places the soil is so soft sometimes it is uh, particularly in Netherlands and some place it is called PT soil, PT soil means organic deposit. Even in India we have lot of organic deposits where the soil is uh, you know the, the actually the problem with the, the PT soils is that they have very high organic content and the settlements are going to be very huge because not only because of the primary consolidation and the prime secondary consolidation there is what is called tertiary con third 
type of consolidation called tertiary consolidation where because if the organic matter disappears then there is another some more settlements that do occur. So, they are all very tricky and people have used in fact uh, in places like Malaysia and in fact in India also we have a lot of organic deposits. Um, organic deposits essentially come so for example you can say that the uh, organic uh, content organic matter content in uh, coastal areas could be little higher. Uh, so, the settlement is also because of uh, that as well. Uh, say for example, Cochin marine clays they have some sort of organic content and one should be little uh, concerned about these things. So, when you have organic because when it is all area that has lot of trees and other things and finally, it becomes little more uh, semi solid and you want to construct a uh, building there uh, definitely it is going to be organic uh, soil. So, all these things need uh, some sort of improvement and we need to increase as you said like we need to have uh, this sort of stability the benefits are that uh, as we know now that the it, it increases strength as well as stiffness better volume stability like you know volume changes are not going to be very significant which are uh, reasonably tall within tolerable limits and increased durability. So, this is what we would be addressing and like we addressed some of these things in the lime columns and lime stabilization we would be looking at some of these uh, they are all equally applicable all these criteria and all would be uh, equally applicable for even uh, cement stabilization or stabilization with any of the additives ok. So, what are the factors that influence the strength and stiffness improvement? Uh, we know that cement content is one of the important variables because soil say for example, particularly you are taking sandy material it could be uh, somewhat coarse grained and uh, if you add bit of cement it becomes little more it binds the particles and it increases cohesion. So, when you add cement content you also need to add water and water content is because it is required for heat of hydration and all that. So, water, water content as well as uh, cement content are important and we call it in terms of the water cement ratio. Then the method of compaction see the thing is there are uh, different methods of uh, compaction that we have in uh, even in uh, uh, whether it is shallow or deep uh, that also is an important factor because essentially we need to have uh, the uh, proper equipment for uh, the compaction. So, the other important point is the time elapsed between mixing and compaction if you mix this cement plus soil then uh, then you take it later for compaction that difference also matters because the heat of hydration is an important variable. Then the length of curing actually we are all familiar with the cement concrete and the curing is very important because availability of water is important for curing or the hydration uh, to take place. Temperature and humidity are some more important uh, parameters uh, that are quite significant in attainment of strength and uh, stiffness required. Uh, particularly when you are trying to do the laboratory the specimen size and boundary effects are also important because uh, the thing is that uh, whatever say you are trying to do it should rep represent the field conditions to the extent possible. If you are not able to do that then uh, the test results that you have in the lab need to be really corrected or you know prop understood in a proper sense to see that they represent the field conditions and also give you proper guidance on, guidance on the uh, design or the performance. Uh, for example, this is a simple equation that gives you the strength gain. In fact, uh, Professor Mitchell, James K. Mitchell, who is a well known authority in uh, soil mechanics, has uh, proposed a simple equation of this form like the UCC strength at any time is a function of the UCC strength at uh, the beginning, like T0 days plus K into log T by T0. It is a simple exponential equation and uh, K is nothing but it is about 4 C, 480 C for granular soils, 70 C for fine grained soils and C is the cement content by weight. There is some sort of uh, information that uh, he was able to compile, but then one should really uh, uh, say understand that the strength gain is a function of the time as well as the type of soil in from this equation nothing more than that. But uh, one can really check in this uh, actual cases what is the actual relationship in fact a uh, uh, lot of work is done in laboratory scale in India on these lines. What, what happens when you add cement to soil say in fact even blast furnace slag also has some sort of cementing agent. So, it has some uh, the uh, chemical reactions like this. 
the hydration of cement produces calcium hydroxide the calcium hydroxide generated is up to 25 percent of the weight of the cement it is a actually a cementation uh, cementation this uh, calcium hydroxide is uh, generated as we just saw in the earlier case um, there is a it encourages H2 phase uh, flocculation and some of the uh, things we have seen and the absorption of calcium hydroxide by the clay and cation exchange also takes place. So, the addition of cement uh, is similar to uh, lime except that it is much more uh, you know uh, I mean like the mechanisms are somewhat similar, but then there is uh, some more addition here like uh, sometimes even the pazolonic activity is also another important variable that comes in here. If the clay is saturated with calcium hydroxide a pazolonic reaction between the component occurs. What we see is that say for example, uh, there is an optimum uh, lime content in some case like you know you have an optimum moisture optimum lime content beyond, uh, after that it decreases. So, you have an optimum content in this case of lime uh, there is a continuous increase of uh, strength but then we cannot uh, just go by that we have to really see if you add say 5 percent or 6 percent or 10 percent does it really give your required engineering properties is what you are interested. So, if you are trying to put this uh, reactions in some sense like uh, you have the absorption or the cation exchange reactions then uh, see water plus clay particles they have this sort of reactions and when you add uh, Portland cement and um, you have a hydration taking place and uh, we have also seen that its aggregation takes place and some of the these things we have seen and it leads to some sort of reaction products which are like this CSH, CAH, CSH here also same thing here in the case of CSH, CAH, CASH what, what do they mean is C is stands for calcium oxide, S stands for uh, SiO, aluminum A stands for aluminum oxide H stands for H2O. So, these sort of compounds do form uh, when you have uh, the sort of say for example, the uh, hydration and uh, some of these reactions happening and uh, you have uh, these materials make uh, the soil uh, stiff, they harden, they change their properties basically and uh, now it has it is a better engineering material like if you want to use that you can use it in a uh, pro properly. So, when you are trying to design a, a soil treatment pro a project for example, you know that the soil in this area is very weak. So, but then what should be done say for example, uh, the government of India or whatever they are planning to have some sort of uh, soil treatment project in some area which has lot of uh, soft soil deposits or expansive soils or whatever. So, one should do soil investigation, so site exploration which will give you what are the geo uh, technical conditions that do not meet the design criteria for example, density, consistency, strength and permeability whatever. So, one can have to uh, look, look at all these numbers of the in situ system you have a soft soil in the, uh, the there in the particular area Maybe you imagine a highway is coming up for about 100 meters 100 kilometers connecting two villages uh, which are having soft soils as a foundation of uh, the soil medium there. So, essentially you are looking for uh, many of the engineering properties there and uh, once you know that the engineering properties are do not meet the criteria then you have to see that they improve those uh, properties in a proper way. What should be done, done is that you need to look for alternative treatments. So, what are the alternative treatments we discussed many say for example, one can use lime, one can use uh, uh, cement, one can use uh, stone columns, one can use prefabricated vertical drains and all that. So, in a project what we should do is that we have a number of methods of doing this, but which is more comfortable, which is more economical, which is more you know where you have contractors who have experience should only be uh, considered. So, there are many issues there because finally, you are trying to deliver uh, uh, the project in some sense in a complete form without any difficulties and delays this is very important. So, what we do is that we have alternative treatment methods which should be evaluated in a particular project, uh, specialty contractors are selected say for example, lime stabilization it has a special contractor or a cement stabilization it has a special contractor. So, you need to get them the information and how they do the work say for example, uh, you can in fact, uh, one can say that this is my requirement 
and how do you use your technique to uh, stabilize this uh, 100 kilometers area and uh, what are the techniques you have, what is the cost, say what is the method you are using. So, one can ask and then they come out with some sort of quotation what you call quotation and all the specialty contractors will be able to select uh, the uh, give their information. Now, so for example, uh, what should be done is that it is always advisable to conduct some sort of laboratory mix uh, testing. Uh, suppose you have cochin marine soil, take it and then try to find out the in situ properties, then try to find out uh, how the properties are uh, improved with addition of uh, cement or whatever lime or admixture in some combinations. And um, so, you try to come out with tolerable admixture properties and optimum de mixed designs. So, come out with uh, what are the mixed uh, the you know requirements say for example, the settlement of the completed embankment should be minimum in this number. So, what is that it gives? So, you have to go for the mixed design and to come out with say for example, if 10 percent of the cement will give you that uh, settlement, then you have to go for that. So, uh, it is something like that, then owner approves the contractors equipment methods and mixed design, because there are so many people in this uh, particularly project, uh, where you have a uh, owner you know say for example, the uh, government of uh, Kerala or government of Andhra Pradesh who are trying to construct some uh, um, roads in a particular uh, area. So, they have to be comfortable, they have to be happy and they have to understand what exactly they are trying to do here. So, owner is one, then the designer is one because designer also should know what exactly he has uh, uh, the problem at hand and give some sort of optimum solution. Then the third one is the contractor, contractor and then the uh, treatment uh, particularly ground improvement experts. So, the contractor sometimes may not have exper experience with him. So, he will uh, use uh, the ground improvement uh, consult consulting agencies or even uh, uh, construction agencies as some of the subcontractors and they try to code for a particular project. So, the owner should be able to understand, contractor should be able to understand, designer should be able to understand. In general, if the owner agrees that yes, the contractor can deliver this job and uh, if the mi mixed methods are also ok in the sense that they do not lead to delays. Uh, so, there could be some methods that is ab done in abroad, but they may not be uh, possible right now in India, because the thing is that even to get an equipment uh, it could take 3 or 4 months to say for example, uh, in Netherlands people have a lot of experience, but uh, if you want to use a pro do in a project then they may not be able to get the equipment you know so the equipment could cost about 3 or 4 crores. It may take some time to get some of these uh, materials and they are all may, most of the may equipment are you know very expensive. So, the owner should be able to understand the contractors equipment methods and mixed design. Soil at site is treated with close supervision that is very important uh, sampling and testing in the field to make sure that the project requirements are met. So, what should be done is that. Uh, the once the contractor is chosen then its work is started the work should be supervised very closely because any uh, slip there could lead to a lot of difficulties and you cannot go back. Um, there are many situations that I was able to see where if there is a slip here in, in this side in this uh, supervision or if you the supervising people do not know exactly what, what it means then there will be lot of issues there. So, one should be a, a knowledgeable uh, in that and then they should supervise properly. Then sampling also, so for example, sampling is required uh, because you have an undisturbed or a pre-treated soil and uh, soil after treatment, how is it? It is performing. So, uh, we need to test all of this and then make sure that the project requirements are met. So, I would like to just give some information on the uh, some, some information laboratory test results. Uh, it is a Bergado et al in a pet paper, it is they did lot of work actually whole of Bangkok and Malaysia you have lot of soft soils. If somebody goes there it is uh, mind boggling in the sense that there is so much work on ground improvement there. All the airports, all the projects are all having lot of ground improvement techniques. So, the results what he showed was that uh, for the Bangkok clay uh, which is a very soft actually uh, 10 percent of the cement was added and uh, they observed that the unconfined compression strength increases by about 10 to 20 times. Say for example, the value may be 5 kPa in, in the initial it increases to 
50 kPa, maybe 10 kPa it becomes 100 kPa. So, there is a good improvement strength because of the addition of 10 percent lime and also the pre consolidation pressure like we know that the settlements are very important if the pre consolidation pressure is higher the settlements are going to be lower. So, it also increased by say for example, instead of 100 it becomes 200 kPa or if it is uh, 250 kPa it becomes 500 kPa like that. So, the pre consolidation pressure also increased uh, very well and uh, the coefficient of consolidation improved by about 10 to 40 times because again one can also calculate the consolidation and as I just mentioned uh, the mechanisms that we discussed already like catenary exchange formation and uh, cementation form and uh, flocculation of uh, uh, flocculation and then the formation of this uh, what you call uh, the uh, flocculate structure. Some of them are examples here uh, which will make you which may make the cement plus soil. In fact, uh, we call it uh, soil crete you know it is it is not sometimes called as uh, instead of concrete we call it soil crete. So, some people use the term. So, they considered about 10 to 15 percent of the cement content as optimum and uh, they did lot of work ok. Uh, for example, this is an important observation that they have made. Uh, the cement content actually it is about 5 percent inactive zone because it needs some time and once we uh, add, start increasing 10 to 15 and all that you know it continuously increases there is no problem with that it is t uh, at 1 week and then it is 24 weeks. So, uh, but then one can see that a, a cement content in this range 25 percent could be all right like which means that this is a zone of uh, very active uh, reactions and all that it is very strong, but then in the field you may not need that much. So, 10 percent may be sufficient say for example, you want you uh, a good bearing capacity uh, you do not need to go for 25 percent 10 percent may be sufficient. So, that is what I want to say that uh, one should be able to choose this are all required from the laboratory point of view and uh, when you are trying to choose we should uh, choose what we need and uh, get back uh, that information uh, and then use it in the design that is what is required. So, this is another example like this is axial pressure and then this is a wide ratio ok. So, you can see that the uh, again the cement content is higher. So, untreated clay the E lock P curve is like this is very steep, but you can see that of course, this is a volume change actually this is all volume change ok. So, you can see that after 1 month, 2 months, 3 months and 6 months they did uh, the uh, you also have E log relationships. You can see that they are in a narrow band you know there are time effects of course, like you can see here that uh, 1 month it is somewhat like this. Yeah, so, you have a very definitely you can see that compared to this uh, where there is a significant volume change uh, these values are quite uh, ok in the sense that uh, one can say that the settlements are going to be minimum like this is what we mean by you know if you just the pre consolidation pressure is also a little higher like you know how do you get the pre consolidation pressure you just draw the tangents on either side using the Cassegrande method. So, for example, in this case if you do that may be you will get a uh, about 80 kp or something like that, but the same thing if you just do here it could be about you may get about 500 kp. So, that could be one ratio of uh, improvement that one can expect. There are some more studies people have done on particularly in the field uh, scale uh, as I said soil cement or soil crete is an excellent combination and it was used for you know in a particular uh, coal dumping area. Uh, they have used this uh, particular uh, material and uh, to essentially for retaining bumps you know for uh, what happens is that you need to re retain lot of uh, coal material and unless you retain them in a proper way it is very it, they you they occupy lot of spaces and uh, they have given that about for 25 years these methods have you know in the as I said in the olden days people were only knowing about cement stabilization or lime stabilization. So, some people they add lime, some people they have added uh, well, uh, the cement. So, in this case uh, it was reported in 89 and then they said that they have observed for about 25 years and find that the cement was quite cement soil was an excellent combination 
uh, they how did they do that in fact uh, they had a pug mill in fact there are so many equipment nowadays mixing it has some sort of mixers and all that so you add soil and uh, cement and then add some required amount of water and then for hydration purposes and the soil is ready and start putting it in the paver okay so you can use it and dump it and construction embankment can be done so this another uh, study the, the some result they have observed actually you know asto uh, has a different type of soil classification in which uh, they say use a1 to a8 type a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 a6 a7 a8 types uh, a1 represents a good soil and a8 represents a poor soil so the degree, the increasing order of uh, difficulty is uh, like uh, indicated in that manner and uh, in this case in whatever they have tested say if the soil is a2 type uh, and if you add 8 percent the cohesion you know the thing is that cohesion has improved to this range 130 to 690 kp which is quite good and the because their objective was to uh, this uh, coal coal ash material whatever they would like to pile it or you know they want to store it properly they were able to use a slope angles of 29 to 49 degrees slope angles are you know say for example if you 29 is increased to 49 that is what it means and they originally it was a 138 kpa and it got increased to 690 kpa and the slope angle at which they were able to store was from 29 it, it was increased to 49 the soil a1b type is another one is about 5 percent was added and it 69 was initial like whatever is the number you have and it increased to 655 uh, something like this so 38 to 55 is a good difference and a4 is something very poor little poor compared to these two and you can see that the cohesion improved from 5 to 125 and the friction angles are in this manner what it means is that like i will show you the diagram like this is a compacted fill and um, so using soil cement they are able to go for steeper angles otherwise what happens only compacted field cannot be uh, very uh, you know um, steep so if you have a material like this soil cement it is a good cover and its angle is 55 degrees here so this is what they have uh, done that in their area and uh, the other one was that in some other place like they have to construct a berm so this is a, a soil cement area uh, block and uh, this is a granular material so this is another one they have used in some place in soil cement as well in some of their uh, same project in the same project this is another interesting uh, example where uh, soil cement was used uh, soil cement was used instead of the regular retaining wall okay you can see that uh, instead of uh, regular retaining wall one can use this uh, soil cement as well which is quite useful so in the case of uh, say for example this again a soil cement block uh, in for in fact uh, that is also quite useful so uh, in, instead of the poor soil they used uh, soil cement block here soil cement material mix actually okay so it was quite helpful so what uh, the study showed was that the costs were very competitive compared to conventional retaining walls or even any of the shoring systems the ease and ability to shape a soil cement in the variety of configurations to meet the project demands was useful actually because of the cement soil uh, block you know it was able to you can put into any shape that we have seen uh, like uh, you know this is one thing this is another case where you are able to handle it well so the use of cement plus soil has been quite effective in many of the stabilization pro, uh, the projects what i will show you now is a sort of uh, see th this use of uh, uh, cement for uh, shallow stabilization it is very clear but then when you are trying to use for deep stabilization so again people have been using it without uh, i mean they have been doing very well because that's a, that is a necessary there like you know if you are if you are trying to uh, particularly in uh, if you go to Sweden or in many of the institutes they have what is called Swedish, Swedish Geotechnical Institute if you go to Finland they have Finnish Geotechnical Institute then you go to Netherlands they have got uh, uh, Delft Geotechnical Institute Delft Geot Geotechnics they call it or if you go to Norway they call Norwegian Geotechnical Institute so you have varieties of institutes very good institutes which are just working towards just exclusively on these uh, problems 
they give uh, you know they are doing very practical work on these lines practical advanced work as well. So, particularly even in Japan in many places this was done and uh, most frequently soils are mixed in situ with cement and lime and using a special specially made machine. This method was developed in Japan and the Scandinavian countries as I said in 1970s itself people have been uh, uh, you know because uh, after the two world wars uh, people are looking for development in their own countries and uh, when you want to try to development your only roads are one alternative embankments, bridges and all that. So, when you are trying to have soft soils uh, only alternative is that you have to improve soil. So, deep mixing methods are called in different names, but they are called deep cement mixing or DMM. So, this is a standard uh, deep mixing methods they call it this is one way of uh, uh, addressing the issues. So, I want to show you what are all these uh, methods like soil mixing methods, deep mixing actually um, it can be uniaxial rotation you know rotation of the glide you know whatever is the mixing device you have. So, it can be a wet mix, it can be a dry mix and uh, say for example, in the case of wet mix it can have singular multiple shaft or singular multiple blades like I will show you in a video now or so it can be multiple non interlocking augers, multiple interlocking augers essentially it can be of shafts and augers and uh, dry single shaft sing or multiple blades multiple shafts. So, you have some sort of mixing procedure here and you can even have hybrid mixing methods where it can have uniaxial rotation plus addition of water ok adding water uniaxial rotation plus linear translation some sort of movement in plane rotation plus linear ax, uh, translation linear translation. So, so, there are certain ways of doing it you know particularly it all depends on the type of equipment you have you know. So, for example, some company may find that that is a better way of doing it some, some company may say that this is a better way of doing it. So, mixing again has lot of uh, different types of equipment it is just that uh, you should know that there are so many methods that is then uh, you know it is very important that they are available in the site and we should understand what it does. So, wet again single shaft and all that we have some sort of meth dry single shaft and blade and mass stabilization pluffing is also possible like you know when it is dry you can pluff. Uh, I just before I try to cover some more points one should understand in this uh, particularly how do you design in the case of a deep mixing project. One is that you need to know what is the design strength of the area say for example, I know that uh, the uh, now the in situ strength is about only the soil is uh, at its liquid limit and the shear strength is hardly 2 kPa and I would like to make it to 50 kPa or 25 kPa how do you do that. So, now 20 k 25 kPa would be the design strength. So, one then corresponding stiffness also. So, what I do is that I come out with some sort of mix uh, design program I take the soil and then go to the laboratory try to add cement what all that you know there are so many factors affecting the uh, stabilization of uh, cement. And uh, once I do the laboratory testing then come out with uh, some sort of specifications for uh, implementation in the field. Here the objective is what implement a rational mix design by laboratory mixing to verify strength. So, essentially what you are trying to do is that you come out with some sort of mix design philosophy in which you can have a good design strength which is with all the variations that you have like you know there could be some uh, variations, but one can get this sort of information. So, uh, this is during the uh, initial stages then when you start constructing quality control during construction. How do you do that actually this is a function of mixing method the way you mix the uh, method uh, mixing methods as I just said we will have dry mix method wet mix method and all that. How do you control the volume of the cement that goes into the system that is another one ok. So, here the objective is what ensure quality control by controlling the cement slurry volume like you know you added uh, you need to add the cement in the form of a slurry and uh, it has to get into that area and then mix conditions are also should be 
uh, reasonably satisfactory. So, once have these two objectives met then uh, quality verification once the project is done how do you verify? Quality verification is check boring use the boreholes then pile head inspection also could be done like you know say for example, at a particular thing you have a lime sorry cement column uh, pile and you can see it is uh, top head confirm the quality of uh, improvement by check borings of the stabilized uh, column. Actually they become so strong and hard that uh, you can remove it like there will be a good course. So, I would like to give a small example here uh, deep mixing at Jackson Lake dam it is a da the dam was constructed in 1917 and uh, see normally what we do is that in the construction of dams um, you tr they it was placed on the natural alluvium and uh, it is an uh, they have a foundation is also somewhat uh, okay. In fact, I must tell you the example of another one which we have in uh, uh, which failed during the earthquake of Buj. That dam was also it is called Chang Dam it was constructed in 1956, but it uh, failed because uh, it had a liquefaction problem. So, what they did in this case we will see here the Bureau of uh, Reclamation determined that the dam and its foundation would be susceptible to liquefaction failure during a uh, potential earthquake. They assume that yes we have the statistics of earthquake occurrence uh, we know what will be the shear force that can come extra shear force that can come because of the earthquake uh, whether the soil has that uh, resistance. If you say like you know the soil strength cannot uh, uh, it is not sufficient to withstand the shear load that comes from the earthquake then what uh, what should be done is that you should increase the shear strength of the soil. So, what they did was that uh, they had number of alternatives in this uh, particular case and then they used deep soil mixing as a method to improve subsoil and install upstream cutoff wall. So, they did I will sh I'll, I'll show you that. So, they also did some sort of laboratory experiments they showed that the deep soil mixing samples continue to increase in strength for at least 112 days after treatment. As I just mentioned uh, the uh, shear strength improvement is somewhat it increases with time and uh, what cement ratio is a key determining factor in the final strength even more important than cement content as I just mentioned what cement ratio is more important you know it is not the water alone that like or the cement content alone separately you can treat you cannot treat them as uh, separate entity here you have to take as water cement ratio because water is required for hydration of cement. So, this is the principal mechanism here. So, laboratory tests run before the project conservative predicted field results. In fact, uh, laboratory tests were also done and when they added this much of cement and found that yes cal made some calculations they found that yes I think uh, this uh, cement stabilization was very good and it is going to be very conservative. Conservative means in the sense it you are on the very very safe side. And uh, one more observation they noted was that wet mix samples generally have lower strength than course taken after the column set. So, this is one example this is a core this is a shell of the dam you have a filter also on either side this is all filter. So, when an earthquake comes uh, all this ma material should not be you know this is subjected to earthquake you know so this is water level and assume that uh, there is an earthquake. Uh, so, the whole dam collapses and all the water uh, or I mean floods and uh, because of the collapse of the dam as uh, shear strength of the soil here is less. So, what we do here is that you try to provide uh, what you call uh, the uh, DSM or you know you stabilize this area ok vertical cut off you have and use this. Once you do that so, you verify that it is satisfactory then it is satisfactory it, that is it. In fact, the same work was done uh, for the when you know Buj earthquake uh, we number of dams failed and um, about at least uh, many dams and fortunately it happened on January 26th uh, uh, 2001 and uh, it was not a uh, it was it was actually a dry season which means that there was no water in the uh, behind the dams. And when it failed all this uh, about at least uh, many dams failed and I was able to investigate at least 4 dams as a part of the research project 
I went to uh, the after the earthquake occurred I went to those uh, uh, dam sections collected the uh, profiles and also collected the profiles of the new new sections which they had like they already started constructing in many places because uh, you know the, the development is something very important they cannot they have to supply water to the people. So, they started immediately constructing all the earth dams. So, I, is, I was went about uh, about after a year later where they were having lot of activities collected lot of data on the uh, uh, liquefaction of the uh, uh, dams and one of the dams actually it just sunk in because the soil was uh, whatever is the soil that was there beneath you know uh, because the pore pressure dissipation was uh, I mean pore pressure was there so much because of the sudden loading of the uh, due to the earthquake then there is a momentary loss of shear strength of the foundation and the whole thing caved in. So, for example, the whole material sunk by about uh, 6, 7 meters and luckily there was no water and uh, it was quite catastrophic. So, what they did was that, so they did not know about it earlier, uh, then after that at least during the reconstruction what they did was that they used micro piles for increasing the stability of the uh, foundation. Okay. So, when I just did analysis it showed that yes the micro piles that they used they even flattened the slopes also. So, when they flattened the slopes and the this thing then it was alright. So, we were able to see that yes it is also performing satisfactory now of course, it is tested for earthquake conditions. So, what I want to say is that shear strength was determined using triaxial and direction tests and results showed that there was a gain in strength in by implementing DSM technique high quality and high strength columns can be constructed using this uh, technique and uh, at Jackson Lake project deep soil mixing provided an economical reliable way of satisfying a di difficult set of parameters technical parameters meeting a tight uh, project schedule line. Actually what is happening is that in most of the cases we should know how this works like uh, say for example here there are very nice statements here that. Uh, the they were able to get the stress strength assessment using triaxial and direction tests. You have to do number of tests, and uh, they were able to see that there is a good improvement in strength, and they were able to observe that high quality uh, and uh, high strength columns can be obtained. Actually, the thing is main important thing is that the way that the, you get the columns, very nice. See, you have a very. I will show you that uh, video now, where the soil is so soft you can just mix it, but once you mix cement and all that it becomes so hard that it is like a column. So, deep soil mixing was something very convenient in fact, many people have been working on these lines because the soil when it is so soft you cannot do anything. So, you need to improve that and the reliable, reliable way of satisfying a difficult set of uh, parameters like I said here the technical parameter is that it is a liquefaction resistance, it is not easy to achieve like you know. Uh, reconstruction as I just mentioned the case of Chang dam was possible, but now having known that uh, you know if I dam is not uh, did not collapse actually dam was still there and you would like to see that uh, it is improved you have to do some sort of in situ stabilization techniques like this. Okay. So, essentially you have to uh, have a technical parameters and also you know sometimes whatever technique you use should be able to should not delay the project actually because there are many cases where you try to choose a technique after the technique everything everybody now is after the technique though technique may just only is important in uh, to the extent of 5 to 5 percent or something, but in 50 percent of the people would be worried about it. So, it is not correct. So, one should be understanding that you need to have a set of uh, technical parameters that you should satisfy and also the project schedules. Okay. So, I, I just followed a couple of good books on this as we know um, like uh, uh, particularly this uh, uh, and engineering principles of ground modification and all that. Now, what I would like to show you is that a video on uh, how it uh, how it can be done. Actually, I must thank uh, Keller as usual uh, they were able to supply with us a couple of uh, material. <coughs> Thank you.
डीप सॉल मिक्सिंग रिग कॉलम्स कैन बी वेरी बिग डायमीटर हाफ ए मीटर वन मीटर वट एवर यू वॉन्ट You can see the jet of water. Jet of grout, it could be sometimes. mixing process quality control here about the amount of uh, cement that has gone in and uh, you can also see the results about the uh, you can see this is an interesting uh, case you can see that the soil before uh, treatment was like this and after treatment it is so good these are all some more and required so you, you have seen that the sample is so hard and good in the sense that yeah definitely you can expect say for example uh, you want a stiffness of uh, uh, 500 mpa or whatever you can get that that's a very important point then i would like to show you a few more videos on uh, the deep mixing and uh, actually you have two types as i just mentioned of course we'll have some more information on that you have one is called dry mixing the other one is called wet mixing so this is uh, a dry mixing method I will show you the wet mixing method. Yeah, you can see that even for a very big projects. So what we see is that in this uh, uh, particular uh, technique. Uh, you need to be very clear the mechanics are very clear that uh, what should be the strength load coming uh, under the soil and what should be the improvement in bearing capacity what should be the settlements that uh, you may expect if it is not treated properly and uh, if you treat this soil you know whether it is with uh, you know in this case we are taking a cement uh, columns in fact uh, cement columns what should be the expected uh, improvement in strength and stiffness if you are able to estimate and then also as i just mentioned in the previous slide that uh, you must be able to do the quality control properly like in this case what we saw was that like uh, once you mix design do, do a good mix design and uh, establish all this uh, mix design formula and then use the equipment that i just showed you lot of methods that we have here like as i just mel, uh, mentioned about uh, the different types of methods we saw just now in the video that uh, there could be uh, some, there are some examples but different companies have different uh, methods of doing it and in fact i said even pluffing is also possible like you know it all depends on you know the cost effectiveness in a particular situation uh, but if you want to do a quality job one should go for very good equipment and also very good uh, program of uh, laboratory mixing and then getting all these parameters properly 
and uh, construction also should be properly done because it is not easy uh, particularly if uh, something goes wrong it is not easy to uh, correct in the field and um, uh, verification also should be very good. And uh, there are people do lot of um, um, analysis here what what is the uh, uh, possibility that you get the design strength in the field correctly or what is the quality control program one needs to have to make sure that whatever you do is all right. So, uh, one should really uh, look at some of these uh, factors in a uh, thorough manner in a comprehensive sense and uh, then that leads to you know very good uh, ground improvement uh, system improved system actually using these uh, cement uh, mixing whether it is in the form of uh, for shallow treatment or deep uh, treatment. Thank you.